There are one or two myths when it comes to the fences and the boundaries of your property, but getting it wrong can cost you hundreds of thousands of pounds and affect the resale value of your property, not to mention the relations with your neighbours. Because if there is a dispute over the boundary of your property, or indeed the fence and its maintenance, then if it can't be resolved amicably, you might end up in court, which can be serious and costly. So let's address one or two of these myths. First of all, some people believe that every property is responsible for the right-hand side of their fence as they look out into their garden or as they look out into their front garden. Or conversely, some people believe that they are responsible for the left-hand fence as they look into the garden or into the front garden. Equally, there are various other myths about who's responsible for the end fence, that is the end fence between you and the neighbour opposite in your rear garden. All of these, as I've just suggested, are in fact myths. There is no standard legal prescription as to who is responsible for which fence other than within the title plans. So let's have a look at this for a moment. Now, first of all, when the builder constructs a property, it will usually decide who owns a specific boundary and where that boundary is. And sometimes, although not always, this is then transferred onto the title deeds for the property, usually with a little T sign indicating which property is responsible for which fence. The T usually points into the respective property area of the property that is responsible for the maintenance of that particular boundary and fence. If you don't have the title plans, you can normally get those from land registry and see whether those markings are on those plans to indicate who is responsible for which boundary. If you find that there is no indication of who owns it and therefore who needs to maintain it, then you will need to take this up with your neighbor amicably, preferably, so that you can get some kind of agreement as to who's going to pay for what, whose responsibility it is, and so on. You can draw this up in a formal agreement, although there's not really a requirement to do so unless you think it's going to be quite contentious, in which case it's better that you get a formal agreement signed up so that it is definitive and in writing as to who is responsible for each element of the boundary and or the fence or the wall that sits upon it. This is particularly important when there are times of storms when such fences collapse, break down, or just over time they degrade and fall down. If it is not clear who owns and therefore who is supposed to maintain this fence or wall, then you're going to have this discussion with your neighbour to decide who is going to be responsible and take ownership for it. But alternatively, as I said, if it is indicated on the title plans as to who is responsible for that boundary, and let's say it's your neighbour but they are refusing to do so, then as a last resort you can take formal action to require that they repair that wall or fence or whatever it is if the title plans do say that they are responsible to maintain it. Equally, it's also possible that the responsibility is shared between neighbours, in which case the cost should also be shared, but so should the design of the fence or the wall or replacement for it and so on. And ordinarily, it should be in keeping with the standard designs in and around the area. And finally, this obviously goes for all of the types of boundaries, whether it's a fence, whether it's a wall, whether it's trees, hedges, and so on. As a quick tip with regards to shrubs and hedges and trees, it will be the land out of which, as in the soil, out of which each of those grow, which will determine ownership. So if a tree is definitively growing out of the soil on your neighbor's side of the fence, as it were, then it's your neighbor's tree and your neighbor's responsible for it. But only up until the point of the boundary, at which case you can trim those branches off, so long as it's not a protected tree, otherwise you require permission. And in any event, you need to ensure that you don't do so much damage to the tree that it would die, which could amount to criminal damage. So as the title of this video suggests, don't sit on the fence and sort these things out so it doesn't spiral out of control into a very costly legal dispute and above all so that you can try to maintain relations with your neighbors thank you for watching